Um, I, I wanted really to, to ask, start with a question. I, I really wanted us to discuss two things, and we'll sort of go in the order. Um, it seems to me, why, why had we got it so wrong? Why, what were the origins of this tremendous mis- misunderstanding that led to our soldiers being in a very difficult place, but Afghans being betrayed? And I feel extremely apologetic that I don't have an Afghan on the panel, and I really do apologise for that. Um, but the second question is, are, are we going to get it right this time? Obama's made a big initiative. You know, what do we have to do to get this right, or is it indeed not us that has to get, get it right? And it, these seem to me actually some of the most dramatically difficult issues we face. So perhaps we could go in order. Perhaps David, if you'd like to start. Well, I'll start, let me start with headlines from The Hague, where I've just been at this summit, um, as, as uh, Professor Seaton said, talking about uh, Afghan reconstruction. And there were three, three things that I, I brought from that. It was yesterday. Um, that uh, Hillary Clinton, her first real uh, uh, trip on the world stage, um, came to Europe, um, and there were some backroom meetings um, with Iran um, at that Hague conference. And uh, the three thoughts that I have from from just quick headlines from Hague before we we get on to some of these other issues are um, are all paradoxes actually. That that Iran was was welcomed by the world community, and, and everybody said Iran can give aid to Afghanistan. Uh, well, now, Iran is one of the biggest aid donors to Afghanistan, but not in a way that the West has understood in recent years. So uh, that was the first thing. I mean, they're building the biggest university in Kabul, but it, because it's not under Western control, we don't count it. Um, the second thing was, was, was President Karzai, who made a very strong and passionate uh, speech yesterday morning, calling for more effectiveness in Western aid. Um, and what that means in the jargon is putting aid through government budget rather than outside the, the, the government, rather than setting up parallel structures outside the state. Um, putting it through the government, therefore building up uh, government. Now, and he said that at the same time as praising the United States for everything they've done for Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Well, the United States is the one country that puts most of its money outside the, um, uh, the government budget and is the least effective in any in any sense, in terms of, of, uh, of counting aid effectiveness in Afghanistan, um, most American money uh, earmarked for Afghanistan ends up being spent in the United States. Um, so, uh, you know, President Karzai, on the one hand, was saying, it's jolly good um, uh, to the United States, but actually they're the people who are, should be most criticized by him if he'd been consistent, uh, if he dared to. Um, but the third thought is, what exactly is it that the Americans are now uh, trying to do um, in Afghanistan. And uh, looking back to last Friday, President Obama's new strategy was much more... Um, uh, uh, I, I was slightly surprised by the extent of the nation-building imperative in, in his language. And make no bones about it, America is now on an imperial project um, in Afghanistan. It changed from the President Bush uh, years of just introducing democracy and hoping that the McDonald's would follow on every street corner and peace and love would, would happen quickly. That didn't happen, partly because of the toxic effect of the Iraq war um, and partly because it wasn't done particularly well in Afghanistan and people, although they're very patient, um, their patience ultimately um, ran out. And, uh, I mean, just very quickly, looking back over the last 200 years, spinning through the, the theme of, uh, of my book, we have been here before. Every single nation that's gone into Afghanistan has changed its policy um, pretty quickly. The British went in in uh, 1838 um, on what was initially just a very limited attempt to put back on the throne a king that they thought should be there and, and depose a king who they thought was too close to Russia. Um, and if anyone thinks that that history doesn't matter, the king who was deposed is, uh, was Dost Mohammed. The king Britain put back on the throne was Shah Shuja. The Taliban recruit young men in the south nowadays by saying, do you want to be remembered as a son of Dost Mohammed or a son of Shah Shuja? And of course to them, uh, Dost Mohammed is, is the, uh, um, the, 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 the Mullah Omar who's across the border, now in, in Pakistan, and the Shah Shuja in their image is President Karzai, the puppet, as they see it, put on the throne by an, by an imperial power. And there are other similarities that go all the way back to the beginning, um, which are very similar to what's happening nowadays. The Mullah Omar in 1996, a few months before the fall of Kabul, uh, took out Afghanistan's most precious relic, 
um, a holy cloak believed to belong to have belonged to the Prophet Muhammad himself, which is kept in uh, in some uh, you can imagine uh, security in Kandahar in a mosque, and he draped it round his shoulders and displayed it to the to the, uh, the the multitude in Kandahar, and declared himself not just the leader of Afghanistan. Um, but the Amir al-Mu'minin, the, the leader of all Muslims, the king of all Muslims everywhere. And uh, the next, the last person to do that um, in Afghanistan was Dost Muhammad in the 1830s, when he declared a jihad against the British. So this um, Islamicization of the conflict against um, the imperial powers, and America is now very much the imperial power in the tradition of uh, Britain before, um, is something which we knew about um, at the turn of the century, um, in the 1890s, when the young Winston Churchill was, uh, was a war correspondent, uh, remarkably, um, in the Northwest Frontier War. He took time off from, from the Indian Army to, to go to the, to the Northwest Frontier. In his book about that, that frontier war, um, he describes uh, meeting some uh, Islamist warriors who he called Talibs. They were known not just as, as, um, as uh, in the wonderfully politically incorrect views of the time, the leader of the opposing army was known as the Mad Mullah, um, but the, there were individuals who Winston Churchill identifies as Talibs, who are religious students, who live, lives, he says, um, at the expense of the people. Um, and the very first reference that I could find to Talibs goes back to the 1880s. In, uh, there was an attack on a British soldier in Kandahar in 1880, and the man who, who attacked him was known as a Talib. So these, this Islamist pressure against uh, the West um, has been there right since the beginning. I think we forgot about it in the 1980s um, when the United States sh shoveled billions of dollars into the pockets of some pretty disreputable people uh, to fight against the communists in Afghanistan. So what we've always done, the British in the two wars of the 19th century, is to go in to do one thing and to end up uh, changing policy. The second British war um, in, the, in 1880, Britain went in and um, with the aim of dismembering Afghanistan. Afghanistan as a whole should no longer exist, was the single line memo uh, sent out from the Viceroy. And uh, within a couple of years, they were looking for somebody, anybody, to hand it over to intact because they desperately needed this buffer between them and the Russians who they thought were coming into India. So we have been here before, and if President Obama gets it right this time, then uh, he will be the very first leader in history to do so. But this is um, an Americanization of the whole process in Afghanistan. Paradoxically, my third paradox from The Hague, uh, to Afghanize it. The aim is to hand it over to Afghanistan, but by, by the end of this year, there'll be a thousand American civilians in Afghanistan. It's going up all the time. It's not really a troop surge. The troop surge is modest. It's the civilian surge, the number of Americans who are going in, um, uh, mentoring um, Afghans, uh, rather than uh, really allowing the Afghans to sort the country out on their own. I, in a sense, make no apologies for not having an Afghan. I mean, it's, it's, it's us who's mucked all this up, and then we've got to try and sort it out. Thank you very much indeed.